Thank Osman, you. Osman, recently you amazed us. You had a scholarship to go study in London. A hey, scholarships. Uh, scholarships, right? Yeah. Yeah, to go study in London, to go study in Canada, yeah. in the US. And you're like, no, I must study in Africa. How great was that? <laughs> Thank you very much. Like, um, I think uh, I don't see it as something that is strange or something that is new. Hmm. Uh, every individual has his or her own conviction. And um, academic is about trust. Hmm. You go to places you trust. You shape a future for yourself based on your readiness. And basically, the things that I'm searching for are things that I can have within. So mm. those are some of the inspirations as to why I decided to take that particular stand. Well, you, you big conventions, you know, Africa is always think the basic education system is abroad. Yes, um, and you know, but we cannot, you know, continue to live like that. When is that chain cutting? Uh, should we just leave as a continent and believe that anything that we want, we have to go to the West to get it? Of course, no. So this is the generation that should actually change the narrative for this continent. Mm. Otherwise, we can never make it. The world is growing faster than we can ever imagine. Right. And we must equip ourselves with our own realities and dig into solution for the African continent Mm. And therefore, we register the development that we all want. But youths have to be in the front line. And we must be equipped with quality education, yeah. well informed by the African reality, in order to realize those agendas. Wow. You, you say the world is moving so fast. What do you mean by that? Wow. Obviously. Um, but when we look at the way in which development is occurring, when we look at the way, the way in which competitions are in both the financial sector, when you look at development, when you look at education, when you look at um, the way in which other societies are being able to dealt with their own development. We look at technology, for instance. We are talking about the fourth industrial revolution. We're talking about artificial intelligence. We're talking about a future in which mm. individuals must be prepared in a way that they can come up or face all challenges mm -hmm. and then navigate a way out. And to do that, Africans must be equipped with readiness to take up responsibilities and as well as being equipped with quality of knowledge to be able to stand those particular powers and to be able to stand those particular change because the change is inevitable. So we must prepare for it. The change is inevitable, we must prepare for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, in one of the interviews, Osman talked about Rwanda and how <laughs> he would like to, you know, uh, learn more about the Rwandan model. What enticed you to learn about the Rwandan model? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, thank you so much. I think uh, when we look at Rwanda, it is very unique. In fact, I talk about this country with passion. I talk about this country with love mm -hmm. because um. To many African societies, we have been relying on Western models, Western way of perce perceiving how societies need to be in mm. order to save our development agendas, our projects, our development models. But these things have not been working for us. Yeah. Now, the fact is that I'm just saying on that, you know, all African countries need to start looking inward. You know, if you have been looking up, up, up and you can't see solution. Is it not time for you to look down? And you know, Rwanda has a model, and Rwanda is a model for the continent in a sense that we are talking about a country that was down to zero back in 1994. Yeah. We are talking about a country that was at its roots, you know? And how were they able to save their society with unity, mm. with transitional justice system? You know, um, putting individuals back to the society, work as a community, mm. build that unity among themselves. And today we see it as one of the fastest growing economies. It's not a magic. It's about relying on yourself, believing on yourself, having a vision and a good leadership quality or a good leadership that, you know, informs every individual to take up responsibility. Mm. And one of the basic or one of the things that is mo very very important about rwanda is that you look at the leadership they make the people very important you know they're proud to say 
the Rwandan. They're proud to talk about the people of Rwanda. And that is how you charge individuals to take responsibility. So it to them that the development lies in their hands. So to them that the development can only be realized with unified forces. Yeah. And that is exactly the results that we are seeing today. Wow. Th that simply means that uh, since actually the youth are even the majority when you speak of the population, means they have a great, great role to do in transforming Africa, making it worthwhile, worth living in. Sure, um, you know, youths everywhere are the active forces. Mm. We have a responsibility to work hard, protect the young or imagined generation, mm. and as well as protecting the old. Now, let me tell you this. You know, um, our education system somehow has been shaped in a way that youths are afraid of staying in their own countries in africa which is you know very very negative mm. it, that even if we go outside and study we don't think about coming back mm. we are like yes when we're done with our bsc we go for our master's program from our master's program we go for ph days work with international organizations sometimes they use us as the very instrument to exploit our own people mm. the reason behind that is that our education have not been back with our societal realities and therefore we are not even afraid of exploiting our own people to whom we belong to but look at the japanese for instance look at the chinese look at some of these asian countries you can find their students everywhere around the world but they keep track of them making sure that with all their skills with all their knowledge they already have that self-patriotism in them that the first country that matters is my nationality the first continent that matters is asia and no wonder today we call it the asian tigers the asian miracles you know they did it upon realizing their own potentials mm. equipping their youths with skills with knowledge and that self-belief and patriotism and no wonder they are where they are today wow. yeah. um speaking of the japanese and the chinese and how their models are actually successful what are we getting wrong in Africa? Is it that we don't have the right education system in place to shape the youth, or we, our governments are not providing enough enticements for Africans to stay in Africa? Sure, uh, I think, uh, thank you. But <laughs> all those things are fundamental issues that we need to discuss as Africans. And um, we have a poor education system. We have to attest to that. Definitely. And um, when we talk about how do our government keep track of individuals living the continent, you know, in so, so many cases, we do not have that motivation. Youths are not motivated to stay in the continent. Mm. They are not given that good atmosphere, that good environment for them to realize their own potentials within the continent. So at first, it starts with the education system. Let us talk about this. The education system that we have in Africa is not tailored by Africans. This education system is curriculums left behind by colonial masters whose main objective <laughs> was exploitative in nature, mm. dominance, mm. and control. This education system is not fit for purpose. That is the reality. So what do we need to do now as young scholars, as Africans, mm. is going back to the Pan-African spirit. What was Marcus Garvey calling for? What was B. Dubois calling for? What was John Henry Clark calling for? What was, you know, we can talk about them, the sacrifice they've made for this continent, even with the fact that they were not born in the continent, but they just see themselves with their color, with their blood, as individuals who belong to us. We talked about Pan-Africanists who were within the continent, like in Kuma. Um, we can talk about, you know, so many of them, you know, like, um, you know, Julius uh, Nyerere of Tanzania. We can talk about Gambians, Edward Francis Small, and etc. We can talk about the Nelson Mandela's and etc. Oh. We had like big generation of yeah. African leaders who stood up mm. to fight against dominance, to fight against control. But the oh, same massacre. battle that they were doing mm. is still here. You've made mention of Thomas Sankara, for instance. You know, I look at him as as something extraordinary Nine. because mm. of the way in which he stood for his people. Mm. You know, with the belief, with the vision, all these things that we're talking about today. Human right, right of women, you know, right to employment. These are his own ideas. 
he was talking about them at a time when no one, including European countries, were not. I remember. He, so, yeah, that, that was in the around the year of 1970s, 1980s. Yeah, it came into power. Sure. Yeah. So, like, if you look at it, like in the 1980s and exactly, you look at Burkina Faso, like in the way in which mm. Thomas was able to, you know, come up with ideas to empower women. And again, let me say this before I forget. Mm. Today, when African people talk about women empowerment, they don't give Rwanda as a reference. Why? In the United States, let us look at the statistics. Women representative in parliament is less than 20%. Rwanda has more than 50%. 68, I think, right now. When we talk about our, our, our cabinet system, mm. look at the women representative in Rwanda. You don't have this all these statistics. You know, in the US, you don't have them in any European countries. But yet, they've centralized everything to make it to us mm. that what they have is the best thing. So, some of the things that they talk about, even if you apply logic in it, mm. you know that they get it wrong. So, I think there are some of the things that we need to do. It is high time that we rely on our realities, on some of the issues that are in line with the African agenda. No continent, no country can develop using foreign education. No country can develop using foreign aid. No country can develop using foreign culture. It is, for, it is time for Africans to realize this. Otherwise, we are going nowhere. Even a foreign language cannot be used by a country to develop. And you are speaking English right now. But that is the issue. That is the product of our education system. If I speak my native language, mm. the African, other Africans will not understand it. Mm. That is the disconnection that exists. I speak four different languages. Mm. But if I speak those languages, I can only communicate with people in West Africa. So are you saying that we can be able to develop with that kind of ethnic diversity? difference in languages, then what we used to communicate, are we heading back to sure. side language in butter trade back in the days? No, but I think, you know, we, we live in a very advanced world mm. whereby English that we are speaking today is not a traditional language in, 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 uh, in Africa. Mm. It was introduced, programmed with strategies. To some extent, we all adapted. Can't we do the same? Or is there anything that exists as these are the people who knows it all and they do it they do it all and some individuals don't and they cannot do it. Swahili, for instance, there is a progress in East Africa where so many countries now have adopted it as official language. It has been taught in schools, you know, and that is empowering the young people in believing in a language. Language is very important. A Chinese can become a doctor without being able to speak English and French. And that is not possible for a Nigerian, not possible for even a Rwandan, not even possible for a Gambian. That is the wrong that we are talking about in the education system. So we have to be able to produce individuals with skills, with knowledge, with everything, relying on our realities. And that in the first step in that is changing or designing the curriculum that fits the African purpose with African languages mm. that can be generalized within the continent where people try to embrace them bit by bit. But without that, our call can never be realized. Very true. Do we see some success stories in Africa? Sure, there are. We just talked about Rwanda, for yeah. instance. We, we have seen what is going on in Mauritius. We have seen other countries like in Kenya. We have seen countries like in South Africa and etc. Even though if you analyze most of them in debt, you come to realize that they also have like few lapses in some of their models and etc. Some of them are still trapped with foreign aid, with, de with, with, with debts, mm. loans, you know, from Britain Wood institutions like the IMF, the World Bank. We've seen recently how Chinese are using their financial, you know, you know, strength mm. to more of recolonize African countries, you know, as a result of the little finance that they're giving us, using paper money in exchange with our valuable resources. You know, but we have these problems, but it doesn't mean that we can't fix it. Mm -hmm. We can fix it. We just have to look inward. We have to start looking down because relying on the West mm. has not solved the problem. 
And Gavi said one thing that was very important. Mm. Any leadership that teaches you to rely on another race for survival, that leadership will enslave you. Osman, we've been reading this great book with you, mm -hmm. The Post Development Reader. Yeah. And it presents something like a mainstream media propaganda. Mm -hmm. I just about that. Yeah, um, thank you so much. I think that is the work of uh, Majid and Victoria, which is a yes. very good work uh, in, in, in development studies. But basically, if you look at the mainstream media, it, it operates in a way that way before the publication of this very book, in, in, in fact, it has ever been there. Mm -hmm. And that is the beauty of academic, because they can, only, they can always look into, you know, things that happen in our societies and come up with solutions to it. Mm -hmm. I will recommend every development student to automatically visit this very literature. Now, um, looking at the mainstream media, we have been portrayed as a continent in a way that we, like, there is no life in this continent. The continent is not developing. It is looked at as, you know, a continent that only has poverty in it. These are the images shown by the outside world about Africa. And this image must change. It's, it must change in a way that if an image mm. portrays poverty, it doesn't attract investors to come. Africa must have an image that attracts investment. Mm. Not foreign investment, but investment by Africans themselves. We have so many individuals living in the diaspora, and that is why I always make this call. Mm. Africa is the future for investment but Africans have to take the lead in it. And I'm saying this because if you look at the mainstream media today, we have millions of people living in the streets of America mm. as homeless. They do not see, want us to see that. They don't want us to see poverty existing in European countries. We've seen how Britain is. We've seen, you know, how Italy is. We've seen how some of these countries are. You know, they have their own issues that they find it difficult to solve among themselves. Just one example. Look at how the Ebola epidemic was portrayed and Africans were portrayed during this crisis or during this disease outbreak. Mm. And what happened when the COVID was killing people in the Western world? Mm. These images were not shown. So that is why it's high time for us as Africans to develop media outlets among ourselves mm. and medias that are not in line with our principles, with our agendas. We have to kick them out of the continent. It's either they be neutral and show the beautiful part of the continent as well, mm. or else they stay in their own countries. That is the fact. But we cannot just be here and being portrayed in a way that, you know, as if there is no life. Mm. So they have to be neutral. And if you look at this very book, you will understand how media has a role to play in balancing power at the international level. That is why you see all these so-called superpowers have a media outlet that propagates their own agendas, even though sometimes they are built on, you know, promises that are not even materialistic. Mm. So we must be aware of this. And the mainstream media have been the cause of most of the problems in Africa. They portray the Western world as if everything there is perfect. <laughs> Brainwashing the youths who doesn't have time to look in depth as to what is happening. Mm. And therefore, we have seen Africans dying in the Mediterranean Sea. We have seen Africans dying in refugee camps in Europe. Mm. We have seen Africans being sent to prisons. Innocent people treated differently just because they are in different continent or just because of the color of their skin. So all these things are happening because of the mainstream media. So we must be aware of it now develop media outlets and build up a network among themselves and they have the African agenda forward, oh. then Africa can have a single voice. A single voice for Africa. Then totally. why do you paddle that? Yeah, um, I had a mentor who once told me that when it comes to mainstream media, what bleeds leads. And I can see it playing it out. Mm. Um, but um, anyhow, uh, speaking of changing the African narrative, I recently saw you on Africa 24 and 
I'm very positive Africa 24 is one of the channels that are actually changing the Africa narrative and I feel like you also you know had your experience with Africa 24. <laughs> yeah um, Africa 24 is indeed a great media um, I think uh, those are some of the individuals that we really need to empower and uh, making sure that African invest in media outlets like this mm. so that they can have the opportunity to extend their channels across the continent and even beyond the continent mm. to make sure that Africans are informed with the best things happening in the continent as well. Mm. But if we don't know what is happening, we find it difficult to embrace it. So media is very important. It is one of those most important instrument that you can use to change a society. Mm -hmm. Because the first step in realizing a development model or a development agenda is through communication. And communication has to be built in a way that is, it is persuasive in nature, whereby it can ignite the spirit of participation, mm -hmm. the spirit of responsibility in an individual, for them to take up visions as collective in a particular society to make change. So media outlets owned by Africans in the continent must be empowered to support the African agenda. Wow.